In this video, I will cover the basics of what an API is, how to construct an API call, and how to make API calls in Python 3 and MicroPython with an ESP8266. The API that I will demonstrate with is the Open Weather API, but you should be able to apply the knowledge of this video to other APIs as well. API stands for Application Programming Interface. Wikipedia describes it as a computing interface which defines interactions between multiple software intermediaries. In simpler terms, APIs provide a way for multiple applications to interact. You can think of an API as a waiter at a restaurant. At a restaurant, you can choose what food you want from a list of options on a menu. You then tell your request to the waiter who delivers the information to the kitchen. The kitchen will generate the appropriate food in response to your request and the waiter will deliver it back to your table. The kitchen in this analogy is the computer server which is hosting the API. The first step to using an API is signing up for a service. First, head over to openweathermap.org in your browser. Click the sign in button at the top of the page. Then click the link that says create an account. Enter username, email, and password. Then agree to the conditions and submit the form. After signing up, you will be sent an email to the address you used in the form. Go to your inbox and look for an email from OWM team. Open this email and click the verify your email button. This will give your account access to the API. Back on the website, open the tab labeled API keys. Here you should see a long string of characters with a label next to it that says default. This string of characters is your API key, which is what identifies your account when making an API call. Keep this tab open in your browser as you continue following this video. In a new tab, open the API page listed at the top of the website. Then click on the button that says API Doc under the service called Current Weather Data. This will bring us to a page which describes how to construct an API call. There are many different formats for making an API call with Open Weather, but let's start off using the by city name method. In this section, there are three example API call layouts. Copy the top one into the URL bar on your browser, but don't submit it yet. In this URL, there are two areas that are bracketed off with curly braces. The first one says city name. Replace this placeholder, including the curly braces, with the name of your city of choice. I'm going to put in Minneapolis. The second placeholder says your API key. Replace this placeholder with your default API key in the other tab of your browser. Now submit this URL. If you immediately get some text saying invalid API key, make sure that you entered your API key incorrectly. If you are sure you entered the key correctly, then wait a few minutes before trying again. When you make a new account, it may take a few minutes for your API key to be ready to use. When you successfully submit the API, you will get a response similar to the one shown here. It includes data about the temperature and weather conditions in the city that you chose. Keep in mind that by default, the temperature values are given in degrees Kelvin. This data is in a format called JSON, which stores data in nested key value pairs. If you're using a modern browser, it likely has built-in tools for looking at JSON data. I'm using Firefox in this video, and it allows me to switch between the raw response and the Firefox built-in JSON reader that has collapsible tabs for each key. Before we make an API call with MicroPython, let's understand how to make one with ordinary Python 3. Open Thani and navigate to Run Select Interpreter. Then in the drop-down menu, select the option that says the same interpreter which runs Thani default. After doing this, the shell tab in Thani should indicate that you are using a version of Python 3 with bundled in parentheses. To make the API call with Python 3, we'll be using a library called Requests. You can install this package through Thani by navigating to Tools, Manage Packages. Then in the search bar, type Requests, then press the button to search for the package. Next, click the button that says Install. To check if requests has successfully installed, enter import requests into the REPL. If no error appears, then you are good to go. Enter the following code into the Thani editor. First we import requests and create a dictionary of parameters. Replace the value for the Q key with the name of your city of choice and use your API key as the value for app ID. Next we set a variable called response to the result of requests.get, with the first parameter being the beginning of the API URL before the first question mark, and the second parameter being the dictionary of parameters from above. 
Requests will use these parameters to assemble the full API URL with the parameters included. We can print this URL by printing response.url. Then we can print the response by printing response.content cast as a string. Lastly, we set a variable called weather data to response.json. This will create a dictionary containing the API response as Python dictionary key value pairs. Save this file anywhere on your computer. Press the green play button at the top of Thani to run the script. You should see the full API URL and the full raw JSON response printed to the shell tab. The last line of this Python script saves the response to a dictionary called weather data. To see all of the data items in the response, the weatherdata.keys function can be called in the REPL to return a list of the top level dictionary keys. One of these keys is called main and contains a lot of the standard data about the weather. This data can be accessed by calling the dictionary using the main key. Let's make one small change to this script before continuing. The temperatures listed in the API response are in Kelvin units. We can change these to a more familiar unit by adding another parameter to our call. The API doc has a section called Other Features with a subsection called Units Format. In this section, it says that Kelvin units are requested by default, but a parameter called units can be set to metric or imperial if desired. I'm going to change my units to imperial to get the temperature data in Fahrenheit. Back in the script, let's add an entry to the dictionary called units and set it to imperial or metric. Then run the script again. You can see that the units parameter was added in the URL and temperatures are now in your choice of units. Now let's make an API call with MicroPython on an ESP8266 node MCU. Plug your device into your computer. Then navigate to Run Select Interpreter. In the dropdown, select MicroPython ESP8266. Then in the port dropdown, select the port of your device and click OK. Press the stop button at the top of Thani to acquire an open REPL. One of the nice features about the requests library for Python 3 is its ability to assemble a URL out of given parameters. The MicroPython analog to requests is called uRequests. Unfortunately, uRequest does not have the ability to assemble a URL from parameters built in. But this does not mean we need to hard code the URL. Instead, we can use a function called URL encode. This function is supposed to be built into the MicroPython standard libraries and it should be able to be imported into your code. However, at the time of recording this guide, I was unsuccessful in importing it. Let's try importing URL and code. Enter the following code into the REPL. If this works for you, you should use this instead of my workaround. Otherwise, if you get an error like I do, use the following alternate method of getting URL and code. In the written guide that goes along with this video on the Micronote website, and below this video, there's a link to download a file called parse.py. Download this file by clicking the link. Then go back to Thani, open this file, and save it to your NodeMCU as parse.py. Then press the reset button on your Node MCU and press the stop button in Thani if necessary. Now enter the following code into the REPL to import URL encode from the parse.py file. If this method or the previous method worked for you without error, then you can move on. Now let's write the main script to make the API call from the ESP8266 Node MCU. First, create a new file in Thani. At the top of the script, import network and U requests. On the next line, import URL and code from either urllib.parse or the parse file which we manually saved to the device. Next, create a dictionary of parameters exactly like we did in Python 3 script. It should include your city of choice, units, and API key. Next, we add the connect to Wi-Fi function from the previous guide.
The next function is a function called get, which wraps around the get function that is built into uRequests. It needs three parameters, URL, params, and the keyword arguments parameter. The body of this function adds the parameters we gave to the end of the URL using the URL encode function. Then this modified URL is passed to the get function in uRequests along with the keyword arguments parameter. Next, we create the WLAN object and set it active. Then we connect to Wi-Fi using our SSID and password. Then we set a variable called response equal to the result of our get function, passing in the base URL from open weather and our parameters dictionary. Lastly, we print the text of the response and convert the response to a dictionary in a variable called weather data. Save this script to your device as main.py and press the reset button on the Node MCU to run the script. I made two errors here. First, I completely forgot to paste my API key into the parameters dictionary. Second, I spelled one of the variables wrong. After I successfully run the script, you can see that the output is pretty much identical to the Python 3 script. The full URL is printed, the full response is printed, and the response is converted to a dictionary in a variable called weather data. As always, the code used here can be found in the written guide that goes along with this video. This concludes this guide. If you want to check out more of our guides, head on over to micronote.tech, where we have write-ups that go along with our videos on YouTube. We also just released our first product called the Atlas Kit, which is available now in our Etsy store and ships to the US and Canada. This kit comes with a Node MCU and all of the requisite parts to be soldered into the expansion board that the Node MCU fits into. This kit is our beginner's platform for getting started with electronics and programming. In the future, we will be posting guides and project ideas for the Atlas kit, along with our usual Node MCU guides to our website and YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.